look directly into the camera. Hey there, Bob Vershek, Drift Away Studios. And this morning I'm in the booth. And here's my story. I didn't want to sit hours every day doing my vocal work in a black, bumpy, rubber, uncomfortable environment. I wanted something that suited me. Uh, perfectly lovely whisper rooms, you know, four, six, eight thousand dollars. Mm, not nope, wasn't going there. So a little research, some materials, a little start and stop, uh, various power tools, and uh, I went ahead and did my own. Came out really sweet. It's a great recording environment. Very dead, very quiet from the outside world, and uh, I had a lot of fun. So let me show you what I did. Maybe you'll get a little inspiration, learn a factoid or two, and, uh, you know, have fun watching. It was a cool project. I had a lot of fun. And I'll put my booth up against a commercial booth anywhere, anytime. Okay, so here's the finished booth. Uh, we'll work from finished booth. We'll work our way backwards, and I'll tell you how I got there. Notice it's got a little bit of a window, it, and we have a ventilation tower on the right-hand side. You'll see more about that as we get into the construction. Okay, I decided on a wood frame using 2x3s. 2x3s uh, are actually 2.5 inches uh, wide, and I was using 2-inch thick acoustic material in my walls, so that fit worked out really well. All right, so uh, I used uh, metal brackets in the corners, glued things together, lots of screws, and... Uh, Right here, you can see a bit of the frame where I was eventually going to fit in my window. Now, on the outside of the booth, I used some mass-loaded vinyl. Mass-loaded vinyl uh, is very heavy. It's uh, kind of like uh, rubber flooring, almost, if you will. It's designed to be put on wallboard walls where there needs to be some sound dampening. The whole idea of sound dampening, or soundproofing, if you'd like, there's no real soundproofing, is that you want something that's very hard for sound waves to move, and mass-loaded vinyl is a good way to do that. Uh, I used a product called DB3. Here's a, uh, an illustration of what that stuff looks like in, in a roll form. Next thing I did when I had the frame together is I test-fitted the door. I wanted to make sure everything was square. If you've ever uh, installed a door, you know if things are not square, uh, doors won't work very well. Okay, the booth has uh, some... Uh, uh, ceiling beams, if you will. Again, continuing with two by threes, but I knew I'd have to mount lighting in the booth, so I'd need a place where I could screw uh, a, a lighting fixture. Wound up using an LED fixture with a dimmer that works out nicely. Now, if you haven't gathered yet, I built this booth in my garage. There was no way I could work with it in the office. So I needed to build it so that I could take the entire booth apart once it was finished, and put it into my office. It was also handy during construction to be able to sometimes put the walls together, fit them, take them apart, finish them. Uh, here in the uh, bottom, you see a T-nut. There's a big three-inch screw that goes to the outside of the wall, screws into that T-nut, which is eventually hidden in the wall. So it allows me to actually take all the walls apart and reassemble them. And if I ever need to move my booth, it's now portable. Okay, here you see the framing for the window. You can see the back of the DB3 material, that gray material. Now that's mounted about a quarter inch in from the outside walls because I wanted to leave an air gap between the DB3 and the outside walls to further dampen sound. Okay, now you see the first piece of acoustic damping material. Now I used a recycle cellulose called EcoCore. EcoCore is from Acoustamac. Here's a, a little shot of the Acoustamac. Uh, it's very similar in sound damping quality. It's actually a little better at certain frequencies than uh, the traditional rigid fiberglass that most people use. And believe me, working with fiberglass, uh, you'll have itchy skin for two weeks. This stuff was a lot more pleasant to work with. It's a little harder to cut. I happen to have a bandsaw. I could cut on a bandsaw. Uh, but it can really be cut with uh, shears, uh, a little difficult, but you can definitely handle it, and it's much more pleasant. Okay, once I had the eco core in place, I wanted it to be held in place well when I finally covered the walls, and I didn't want it shifting around. So I used jute uh, fabric strapping, the kind of thing that's uh, used inside of chair seats, 
uh, and just stapled it to the wooden beams over the eco core so that it would be held in place. Next up was I framed in that pre-hung door, just finished off the framing, made sure that it all was square. Now remember, that door wall is a separate wall, comes apart just like all the other walls, but, uh, so, but I wanted to make sure that it was sturdy enough to remain square when I moved it. Okay, I covered the acoustic material and the strapping with a thin polyester fiber fill. Uh, anybody who's ever worked with uh, fabrics quilting, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a thin, fluffy... Uh, polyester fabric but I did that because I wanted to cover up any bumps or or any unevenness that there might be on the inside walls now the inside walls eventually got covered with an acoustically transparent fabric again from Acoustamac it's the kind of thing you'd use for a speaker grill okay the outside walls I forgot a step here to get a photograph in the outside walls on the outside of the DB3 mass loaded vinyl is eighth inch uh, masonite or hardboard as they call it again it's thin but it's very dense and very hard for sound waves to uh, vibrate so they really do help it does help to cut down on the outside noise now if you've ever worked in a booth you know fresh air gets real slim after a while so i wanted to provide some ventilation i uh, originally called this my cooling tower but it doesn't really cool but it does keep me from suffocating in the booth with a nice flow of fresh air but openings to the outside have to muffle any sound. You want airflow, but no sound flow. So look at these baffles. It's kind of like what you would see in the inside of a car muffler. Sound moves basically in straight lines. So any sound that comes in hits an angle and then a flat and an angle and a flat, and it keeps the sound from propagating into the room. Also, you wanted to damp any sound that would come in. You allow airflow. So all of those baffles are covered in fiberglass. Now, I told you I didn't want to work with fiberglass on the outside. Even this little uh, ventilation tower, boy, that fiberglass was stabbing me in the uh, hands and wrists for days. Okay, in order to move the air, I put in a couple of fans. Now, fans in a recording booth just uh, don't work out real well. But these are a pair of super quiet equipment cabinet ventilation fans that are designed for things like home theater cabinets. So they're really quiet. I don't remember the spec. I think it was like 4 dB or something like that. And they're also variable speed. So I can put them on low, medium, or high. Low and medium, my noise floor when I record doesn't even pick them up. On high, I got to be a little bit careful. Okay, everything done. Fabric covered. Things in place uh, out in the garage. Now it's time to get this thing into my office. So here's the initial assembly. The back wall went up first, two side walls to hold it steady, and then the uh, the roof, if you will, mounted on top. Again, everything, same construction, uh, starting with the fabric, the polyester, the Acoustamac, the uh, DB3, an air gap, the masonite, and then the outside uh, polyester and fabric covering. Okay, now my office is burgundy and gray, and my recording booth is burgundy and gray. You can see that I've mounted a booth dedicated PC up on the top of the booth sitting on some uh, of that acoustic material so I don't have any computer fan noise inside the booth and that dedicated PC's uh, got a high-speed wired Ethernet connection uh, so that I can uh, work remote or do whatever I need to do here's a little detail of the window now the window is three-quarter inch plexiglass or lucite uh, again the idea was something very heavy that would not transmit sound waves that's why it's so thick and it meant I didn't have to do a double pane window, which would have been a little bit more of a construction uh, problem for me. Hey, who's that? That's Barkley. Barkley, he's my uh, sound engineer. Uh, he's looking at me while I'm building and saying, Dad, what the heck are you doing? Are you nuts? Yeah, yes, Barkley, I am slightly nuts. Okay, uh, here's the exhaust vent up near the ceiling so that hot air is blown out of the booth. You will notice I did not put a grill on it. It would look prettier. But a grill means airflow over the works of the grill. And if I did that, then I'd be inducing fan noise into the booth. So even though it's not pretty, just open uh, vent. You can see a bit of the corner of the door. What I did for the door, because I used a pre-hung door, was I mounted a, I fabric covered and mounted the uh, eco core and then just screwed it to the door in a couple of places. When I close the door, it provides a nice seal, and I don't get any echoes off the inside of that door. All right, here's a close-up of the ventilation fans. That is the uh, intake below the fans, which goes down to the bottom of the booth. 
And then as hot air rises, the fans draw it out that top vent and blow it away from the booth. Okay, Barkley finally figured out what I was doing. He thought I was building him a nice soft uh, uh, den. By the way, Barkley is sitting on uh, what is uh, weight room uh, carpet tiles. That's what I use for the floor. They're soft. They keep my laminate floor from causing reflections in the booth. Uh, they were easy to install, and the booth is simply installed sitting on top of them. Just put them in place before I assembled the booth. When I first built the booth, I had a microphone stand, but I kept kicking that microphone stand. Uh, it was always in the way, uh, tripod legs. I came up with the idea of, eh, why not hang it upside down from the, from the ceiling? So here you go. My mic stand upside down. It provides a nice place to mount my, uh, my gooseneck for my copy holder. It works really great because I can slide my microphone up and down for standing or seated readings. I can, it's completely adjustable if I want to step uh, back from the mic, close up and kiss the mic. It worked out really well. It was one of the more clever ideas I think I came up with. Okay, so here we go. Here's, uh, here's the guts of my booth. Equipment in place. By the way, I originally uh, set the booth up with a two-height table in the corner. Took up too much room, wasn't flexible. So as you can see, I wound up putting in some adjustable shelving, wire shelving. Worked out great. Angled brackets to mount my monitor speakers so they're pointing correctly. My, uh, they're JBL uh, six-inch monitor speakers. Got a good solid headset. Uh, one of those uh, shelf brackets makes a nice hook to hang my headset when I'm uh, not wearing it. Okay, I've got my Focusrite 2i2 uh, audio interface. Uh, I've just upgraded to the Harlan Hogan Signature uh, microphone of VO1A. I love that mic. Uh, my old mic was kind of a beginner mic. It was all right, but this is uh, a terrific mic with performance of a $1,000 mic for uh, about $299. Just love the thing. My DAW is Reaper. I started out with Audacity. Audacity crashed and annoyed me. I loved using it. It was simple, and it worked. But Reaper allows me to do, uh, do so much more, automate a lot of my audio work. All right. So, hey, take a look at my demo reels. My corporate reel was produced at a studio. The others were done here in my booth. And I, I've got a sound quality that I like even better. I've got some work to do on those demos. I've got to add music and just change some things around. But they're available. They're available uh, up on uh, my website. Website can be accessed at driftawaystudios.com or bobvershek.com. It's a constantly changing thing, upgrades and changes as I get deeper and deeper into my career. But uh, it's, I, I, my website uh, design uh, philosophy is keep it simple. Show off your work. People don't need a lot of peripheral stuff. So here we are, finished booth, great project. I, I hope you liked uh, what I had to do. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. I'd be happy to offer any advice to anybody I can on what I did, how I did it. That's what it's all about. Well, keep on talking, keep on recording. If you uh, like, you can follow me. And hey, what kind of voice artist am I over here with my mumbling and stumbling? All right, it's been great. Happy day to everybody. Take good care.